Mighty brothers and sisters, and our Lord and our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, welcome. Thank you for joining us here in Weapons of Righteousness. Uh, before we go ahead and, and continue on in God's precious, incredible word, let's just first and foremost go ahead and present this before our Lord and our Savior. Heavenly Father, my Lord, we are here again before you, Father. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Father, we are delighted always, my Lord, in your presence, my Lord. You, Father, who are a good father to us, my Lord, instructing us, my Lord, and chastising, my Lord, disciplining those whom you love, my Lord, that we, my Lord, would truly bless your name, my God, and live according to your character. Where is your character? Father, through your son you have said unto the Pharisees that the scriptures do not give eternal life, but rather the scriptures testify of you. My Lord, we know that it is by your word, my Lord, that we see your character and see the character that is you even throughout our brothers and sisters all throughout history. My Lord, that by your word, your Holy Spirit, my Lord, God Almighty, convict us, my Lord, the same word, my Lord, that you brought into my mind. Go ahead, Father, I'm just here to be a servant, my Lord, unto my brothers and my sisters to bring your word that we, my Lord, may be holy and pleasing unto you, my Lord. Increasing in the knowledge of you, my Lord. Not out of arrogance, my Lord, but in more humility. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So, brethren, we know that many people have stated in schools, libraries, the internet, any place where education, knowledge is presented as power. And Christianity has always been placed under this, let's say, under a microscope. Where people have said that Christianity is nothing but a ripoff of previous beliefs. That Noah's flood is a copy of the Gilgamesh epic. That Christ is compared to the gods in Egypt. So on, so forth. Yada, yada, yada. But we see here, brethren, God's word we know is truth. The Lord is truth. And this word testifies of him. So we have to remember, brethren, that no matter what is placed out there, the word and the word alone is always the authority. Now, something to help in, in our walk. Peter had said to have a reason for your faith. Not that the reason alone, my brothers and sisters, are going to go ahead and when you speak to unbelievers or those who are skeptic, one's reason is going to go ahead and bring them to repentance and believe in Yeshua HaMashiach. But that the reason itself, not in just fortifying more your faith in our Lord and Savior, can go ahead and testify to the person that we are not ones here to be brainwashed by hearsay, but knowing by testimony and truth, which is the word of God, that our faith is sound, it is firm, and it is true. Now, let's first go to Romans 1, Brother Paul, his letter to the Romans. And it's going to be Romans chapter 1. It's going to be... Chapter 1, and we're going to go ahead and kick it off at verse 20. It reads like this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, and the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. 
Amen. These are verses 20 through 25 in chapter 1 of Romans. So where is it in this historical count of God's word that salvation is all throughout history? The prophecy of truth and salvation is all throughout history. Where is it in God's word that we can go ahead and see what Brother Paul is attesting to what is one of the situations, one of the circumstances that we see that Brother Paul is testifying to, saying that since the beginning, since in the creation, they knew God, but refused to thank him and worship him as God, rather looking to worship the creation rather than the creator. Let's go ahead to Genesis, and it is chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. This is post-flood. Noah, his wife, three sons, three daughter-in-laws, ready, have populated the three sons and the three daughter-in-laws have populated the world. This is where we get our nations from. But you're going to see how the nations actually come to be. It says in Genesis chapter 11, Verse 1, now the whole earth had one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had brick for stone. They had asphalt for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city. And the tower, whose top is in the heavens, let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. This right here is the meat in this whole account that is going on. Verse 4 of chapter 11 in Genesis, it says, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. Let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. So you see that, again, there is mankind repopulated through the three sons and the three daughter-in-laws of Noah. They're speaking one language. And what they want to go ahead and do with this unity of being able to all speak in one language, they want to go ahead and operate in the same mindset and do what? Do evil. And go ahead and try to create some tower so that they can go ahead and raise themselves up above God. It says, let us make a name for ourselves. It's like Lucifer, who used to worship the Lord at his throne. And rather than worship the creator, he now wanted to be worshipped. And rather than mankind wanting to go ahead and lift the very sovereign name of Jehovah, they wanted to go ahead and make a name. For themselves. Then they even say, let's do this before we go ahead and get scattered. Let's continue on forward. Verse 5 But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men have built. See, brethren, something that you see in all pagan mythologies, which are just demonic doctrines, because gods do not exist. Demons do. There's only one God and one God only that is Yeshua. But as you see in these demonic cultures, they want to go ahead and always make their, their, their gods so impersonal. And when they are personal, all they do is they would come down in these myths and just go ahead and, and mate with women and, and stuff like that and cause drama in human beings' lives. Can't believe that this is what people used to actually bow down and worship and I'm not one to talk. I was a fool entangled in the lives of Satan as well because I too used to be an idolater. I was literally a pagan and I went and just basically worshipped everything underneath the sun. But praise my Lord and Savior, Yeshua, hallelujah, from removing me out of the darkness and filling me with his Holy Spirit. It says, the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. You see that the Lord, our God, the one true God, he is personal and he cares, cares for his creation. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. They all have one language and this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Come. Let us go down, little 
I'll stop right there for a moment. Come, let us go down. Another time when Yehovah says, so there can be a teaching against many who say that there is no Trinity, no Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But that's for another time. Come, let us go down and there, and there confuse their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they ceased building the city. Therefore, its name is called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is from chapter 11, 1 all the way through 9. Afterwards, it begins to go into the genealogy of Shem. So what do we see here? Mankind. Many of us, we know, all of us should know, that no matter what is the color of our skin or what nation we come from, that we were born in and we have picked up the, the, the customs and the culture of it, mankind is one. There are not two, three, four different versions of mankind. There is only but one man. This is the truth. The truth that you see again in God's word that has the answer for all matters that there shouldn't be racism or any of that that sadly because of sin happens in the world. But we're not here to go ahead and discuss racism. That is a topic too that can also be discussed by God's word straight cutting it into pieces. But what one is discussing here is when the unbeliever, the skeptic, looks at the Christian and says, I see so many similarities between all these uh, cultures, these myths, these stories from other cultures and Christianity is just a ripoff off of it. They think that Christianity is a remix of these demonic cultures. But what they got to understand, brothers and sisters, and what we first and foremost are to understand, because this is not to debate anybody into the faith. This is that a person themselves, that their heart of stone becomes a heart of flesh, that they see the truth, that they hear the word of truth, that they fall into repentance. And they accept Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, as their Lord and their Savior. And then they will continue to go ahead and walk and keep his commandments because they love him. Now, back to the matter at hand. What this is about is reminding us, brethren, that we are not a copycat of anyone. But rather that all the cultures with all their beliefs have copied, copied the very truth of Yehovah. And what they have done is twisted it. And we've done it and added here and taken out from there. Remember that the world, remember that mankind spoke all one language. And because of their arrogance and their disobedience to Yehovah, the Lord divided their language. He broke them up and they began to speak different languages because again, if we're not all communicating the same, then there can't truly be any unity. That's another teaching for another time. So with there not being the same language, the same words to understand each other in communication, they got scattered all around the globe. Obviously, there's different temperatures throughout the globe. This is where then we get different color pigmentation. But what we have here is think of this. Brother Paul, by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, is understanding. Also, he was a student of the Torah. But now with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, able to understand the Torah even more in depth. The Torah is, of course, the book of the law. First five books, so on and so forth. Continue this on another time. But what he is putting there in Romans 1 verses 20 through 25 is he is letting it be known that since the very beginning, all man knows just simply by looking at the creation that the Godhead exists, that the Lord, Yehovah, our Lord God is one, that they know that the Lord he is Lord and there is no other. But they refused to thank him and to worship him as God. And God allowed it to be. Because again, the Lord is not one for making robots. He has us having free will. So just think on this. 
You have people who look to raise up their name. Make a name for themselves. Now they are scattered. And have different languages. But in each and every single group. You have those people that were a part of this event. At the Tower of Babel. So what happens? In such arrogance. In such pride. Wanting to raise themselves up before Yehovah. Now that they have been divided and split across, what do these nations, what do now these people that are spread out begin to do? Well, with such animosity, they begin to go ahead now and in their own cultures start to take everything that they had heard and knew about Yehovah. Everything that they, that they had heard and knew pre-flood everything that they had knew of before they begin to twist it remember in the tower of Babel event this is that throughout the time and throughout the years they knew that the world of old had been washed and obliterated away and that they had came out from a flood so what does now a hateful spiteful bitter person do begin to go ahead and now go ahead to shape that historical account of the flood, the real flood documented here in the Bible, and then begin to come up with tales of their own, such as the epic of Gilgamesh, that people think that Noah and the flood is a ripoff, is a bite off, but it's the other way around. And they go ahead and they continue on and they go ahead and there's always been a Messiah preach. When you go ahead into Genesis and you go ahead and you look at the, the bloodline of Adam, there's a son through Seth that says Enosh. And it says that when he was born, that all men began to know about the Lord. We know that Noah survived into this new world post-flood, and that he, a preacher, and his children, they continued on bringing about the word of God. Shem and Japheth continued on to preach the righteousness of God. That's why in verse 10 in Genesis 11, you see that after this account, it began now to start telling you about Shem. Why? Because after mankind is scattered, and now in this bitterness, they go ahead and they begin to create their own stories. They begin to twist the glory of God and make it perverted and have people believing to worship the creation rather than the creator. There is still a line of people that have not fallen away into that mindset. And that is why next in Genesis 11 verse 10. It begins to tell you about this family line continuing. And it starts telling you about the genealogy of Shem. We know that from there, Abraham comes about. And it is from Abraham the promise is given. A promise that remember in Galatians chapter 3, Paul says that all of us that are in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, we are truly children of Abraham. So, my brothers and sisters, I leave you with that. To remember the reason for one's faith. To know, brethren, by sound doctrine and the truth of God's word, that we are not a copycat of any religion. If anyone comes and questions and brings up such a matter my brethren you now have this teaching among others from other ministries that i'm sure to have also touched upon the subject but one has come in the power of the holy spirit for the holy spirit brought this up and i was just amazed just with the father just in conversation just before him in his presence and just talking with my wife and the holy spirit just brought all of this to mind and brought up the, the account in Genesis and what Paul was talking about in Romans 1. And I said, wow, Lord, thank you. Let me go ahead and share this unto my brothers and my sisters so that the reason for our faith can continue to be strengthened even more. So brothers and sisters, I exhort you. I love you. And praise God all day, every day. Continue on, my brothers and sisters, firm in the faith. Do not fall, fall away. We are living and have been living in apostasy. The apostasy will only grow greater and greater. Stick 
to sound doctrine, being Bereans, my brothers and sisters. And know that, again, we do not battle flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and rulers. And we are a ministry that God has purpose and his sovereign will and his grace and his purposes and his purposes alone. That is what this ministry is. In 2 Timothy 2.15 is the mission. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6 is the vision. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Love y'all in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ.